Hi, I'm Jay Leonard Jay. Today we're going to talk about what the best wiring scheme for your guitar is. Well, welcome back to the Tone Lab. Man, it's been a while since we had one of these. Uh, it's brought to you today by Tone Specific Pickups. Great sounding pickups and we're going to try a lot of them today actually. Uh, today's topic is on uh, different ways we could wire up that volume and that tone knob on your guitar. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you could do it and you read about all the different styles online like treble bleed and 50s mod, grease bucket, fez parka. It's really easy easy to get kind of lost and to not know which is the right one for your specific guitar or your specific style. So what we're going to do today is I'm actually going to talk to you probably about the most uh, googled ones, the most popular mods and uh, we'll see which one really fits your style and we'll talk about the pros and the cons of each one as well. So let's grab some guitars and get to work. Well, the best way to start is with the most standard kind of wiring schematic out there. Uh, you'll see it on Fenders, and Gibson, Strats, Tellys, Les Pauls, SGs. It's all kind of the same thing. You get a nice even response from your tone knob, nice even response from your volume knob through the whole rotation. They work independent from each other. They don't step on each other's feet. Very standard because it's pretty much the most straightforward and really easy to sound good at style right here. Uh, right now I have everything pretty much on full and you get that beautiful tone that you're gonna get with almost every wiring style. <laughs> Beautiful. What you'll notice is when you start turning down your volume knob uh, and your amp starts cleaning up, you'll also notice that surprisingly you'll lose a little bit of treble content in your tone. See up here you have a little bit more snap and brightness. Down low you have a little bit more softness. Of course you could compensate that by moving around your tone knob a little bit, maybe keeping your tone knob in the middle when everything's on full, turning down and raising it. That helps a lot and uh, there's a lot of different capacitors you could put in with that tone knob to get cool wah-wah effects. One thing I like about the standard wiring is actually if you have very, very bright pickups. Uh, in this case, I'm using the tone specific country pickups because they have a lot of twang and a lot of, you know, snap to it, which could be a little bit tough sometimes. And when you have something like a really bright guitar, having a standard configuration like that makes it really easy just to roll off a little bit of that treble just by decreasing your volume a little bit. <laughs> And that way when you do need that bite and that punch, you just squeeze everything up and you're ready to rock. There's a reason why this is the standard wiring. It works pretty much for any situation you want to throw at it. Now not everybody's going to like the fact that your tone changes as you turn down the volume. They just want to keep the volume, brightness all the way through the rotation, keep the tone modeling just separate with the tone knob. And I don't blame you, that's why they have a little thing called the treble bleed circuit. What the treble bleed circuit is, is it's pretty much a little capacitor that they put on the volume knob. And that capacitor is going to just allow those highs to kind of bleed right through no matter where you are on the volume knob. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You could have just the cap by itself. Um, I particularly don't like that style. You'll see it on a lot of PRS's and everything uh, because I find that when I turn down the volume knob, it's the same amount of trebles coming through. So as I get lower and lower, it just seems a little bit too bright for me. I actually prefer to use a capacitor with a resistor. And what that resistor is gonna do is it's gonna help that treble amount decrease as you go down as well. So pretty much everything just moves down together in a nice pretty slope to keep things nice and even. Uh, there's two ways to wire that resistor and that capacitor. You can do it in series or parallel. Right now on this guitar, I have them in parallel and they work quite fantastic. Here we go. So that's it with everything on 10. And you'll notice that when I turn down the volume, it gets cleaner, but it still has the brightness. Oh, that's, that's great.
Now that's very, very handy because you get just a great consistency no matter where you are on that volume knob. Uh, and I'm using it right now with the tone specific jazz pickups because the jazz pickups work very well with the tone knob. So if you move the tone knob and get a nice, beautiful spot in it, you know. <laughs> When I move the volume knob down, I still keep a nice full frequency so the tone knob does exactly what I'm expecting it to do. Just a little bit quieter. It's very, very beautiful. Uh, now you'll notice when I have it wired in parallel, the, the volume taper changes a little bit. It's a lot more gradual and then you have an abrupt cutoff in the end. So you kind of have to get used to that. Uh, if you wire that resistor and capacitor in series, you'll notice that you get less of that effect. It's more of a natural taper at the expense of having maybe a little bit more mids bleed through your tone. But a very handy mod nevertheless. The only thing to keep in mind though when you have it like this is maybe keep it away from those vintage fuzzes or those color sound overdrivers uh, because you'll notice that your tone gets a little bit brighter and gets pretty bright as you turn down your volume when you have that fuzz on. So uh, if you're just using it with overdrives and distortions, you'll be happy as a bunny and a wherever bunnies are happy. And then if you uh, have it with the fuzz, maybe look at a different situation. Well, right now I have this guitar wired up with what's called the 50s mod, the Gibson 50s Les Paul mod. And what that did is it actually made the guitar sound a little bit more clear and a little bit more sweet. <laughs> Oh, that sounds pretty great. Uh, it also made it so that when you turn down the volume, you actually did retain a little bit of highs, but maybe in a slightly more natural way than you'd hear with the treble bleed. Very, very useful, very, very nice. Uh, but the thing that's a little bit tricky about it, and the reason why Gibson stopped doing it, is uh, they are very interactive with each other. A, a change you make in the volume is a, is a change uh, in the taper of the tone knob, or a change you make in the tone knob, they, they talk to each other, uh, which makes the guitar very interactive, and you could find some really cool sweet spots, but it's not gonna work in that very predictable way, uh, especially for the person that likes to tweak the tone and the volume a lot and like to find your sweet spots. <laughs> But if you're the kind of person that likes to keep everything on 10 when it comes to the tone knob and you just like to do everything with your volume, man, this might be the mod for you. In fact, all my Les Paul Gibson style guitars usually have this mod in it. Last but not least, we have the grease bucket tone knob. Wow, you're seeing that on a lot of Fender guitars. Lately, they kinda advertise it. And the way they say it works is pretty much, it just makes it so that you have clarity all the way down to zero on your tone knob. So it will get darker with your volume knob uh, like the standard wiring does, but what happens is with the tone knob, you pretty much have a lot more uh, sweet spots to deal with on it. So it's, it's quite handy for a person that likes to tweak that tone all the time. The way it does it is, uh, at least the way I interpret the schematic, is that it has a little resistor in with that tone cap. And what that resistor does is it prevents uh, pretty much the tone knob from going all the way to zero. So when your tone knob is all the way off, you're, it's actually that resistor makes it so that it sounds like your tone knob's like at one, like at a very low value, which prevents that big woofiness right at the end of your tone knob. Uh, the other thing it does, it has a second capacitor in it. And what happens is when you start turning that tone knob, it starts bringing in the capacitance from that other capacitor in series with your tone cap. And when you have two capacitors in series, you start decreasing the capacitance, which is gonna cut, change that uh, cutoff frequency in your guitar, giving you a little bit more clarity, maybe a little bit more uh, uh, evidence in the mids. It's, it's very, very nice. Long story short, you just get clarity. Uh, uh, so let's put everything up here on top here. <laughs> And then let's turn everything down to the bottom and you still have a nice usable tone. Oh, 
Well, that sounds very, very useful. Uh, I usually, when I have a grease bucket set up like this, I'll put the tone knob kind of at around six or seven and then make the adjustments as I move my volume knob. And with this setup, you could actually wire it up with the Fez Parka on top of it. You could wire it up with the treble bleed on top of it. Just a very, very versatile style here. And uh, for all of you wondering, my, uh, my blue telly that I use in a lot of my videos, that's wired with the grease bucket. So that does pretty well for me as well. Well, that is it. That is the video. Thank you all so much for watching. Now, you can tell we've only touched the tip of the iceberg. We could talk about uh, different types of tone caps. We could talk about uh, the, the old Telecaster style wirings, the, the series parallel style wirings. We could talk about push-pull pots. We could talk about phase change. We could, there's so many little aspects of these things we could talk about. So if you want to see more videos like this, please write down what topic you'd want me to cover in the comments below. It's really nice to see what your input is. That being said, of these, you know, basic wiring schematics we talked about today, which is the one that you use in your rig or you want to give a shot and why. It'd be great to hear what you have to say. Please keep commenting. Please keep subscribing. And uh, that being said, I'll see you all soon. Take care and goodbye.